In episode 12 of So Say We Travel, the podcast, we will discuss traveling and living in an RV with pets. Including our two furry crew members, how we care for and travel with them, and what are some important things we had to consider when pursuing this life as dog owners. Finally, we will carry on with our review of Battlestar Galactica episodes. And this week, we're reviewing season one, episode six. Welcome aboard to So Say We Travel. Hi, I'm Sean. Hi, I'm Charlie. And we are So Say We Travel, yes. and this is our 12th podcast episode. Mm -hmm. um, this series of podcasts, I like to start every single one off by talking about kind of why we got into doing them in the first place. Yes. Personally, I believe that experience is interchangeable with knowledge. And so through our life experiences of first, we were sticks and bricks mm -hmm. and then transitioned to living full time in our RV. Yes. And we documented and shared our experiences with that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully shared some of our knowledge with that. Hopefully. And now that we're living full time in the RV as mm -hmm. pretty much newbies, we've only been in it for about two and a half months now. Yeah. Um, we want to document and share those experiences mm -hmm. with you, hopefully share some of our knowledge hopefully. and hopefully make your life a little bit better. Mm -hmm. If you ever decide to pursue this or you're looking through it and either commensurate with us, know that you're not out there alone making yeah. the same mistakes that we <laughs> yeah. are as newbies, um, but also building a community. Mm -hmm. uh, also some place where we can exchange ideas, exchange yeah. knowledge, exchange experience, and hopefully streamline each other's process out here on the road, mm -hmm. uh, make each other's lives a little bit better on the road. Mm -hmm. All that wonderful stuff. Yep. Um, so, yeah, since our last episode, mm -hmm. like I said, we've been in it's about two and a half months now. We're yes. living in this thing. We've settled into our routines. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everything that we were going to be doing full time, we've stopped, We've done it. Yeah. Um, so, homeschooling. Yeah. Homeschooling. You've done that. You were off the ground and mm -hmm. running, you know, building the plane in yep. the air. How's that going? Uh, I think it's going really well. I, uh, I, I enjoy it so much. Um, I, I just... At first, um, like figuring out the lesson plans and stuff and, and, and trying to be like on a schedule was kind of hard for me, um, especially because like I'm a, I'm a planner, like I have to be on a schedule like type thing. Um, and it, sometimes it doesn't go that way. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of hard to let go at first. But once I did, once I let go of that idea, it's just it's so freeing and so um, um, enjoying just because I can we can do the lessons when we want to do them. You know, if mm -hmm. we want to take time to get started in the morning and we can do that. That's okay. You know, if I want to have an extra cup of coffee or something, you know, if she's just not ready to get started, then we can do that. Um, and then, you know, if we want to go like do something one day and then do schooling the next day or something, we can do that too. So it's, it, I enjoy like the freedom of it the most. Um, and then we, it's been really great. We, I talked about this last um, episode, how we joined a co-op um, so she's been going to that um, one day a week. She goes to her co-op classes. So that gives her that social aspect and hanging out with some friends. She's already made a couple of friends there. Mm -hmm. um, so she loves going and hanging out with them. Um, so that's been fun. We actually just went on our first field trip last week. Um, we went to a dairy farm. That's awesome. Um, so she learned how they produce milk, um, how they bottle milk, how they make cheese. Um, and so that was, that was a lot of fun. It was really interesting to learn. Mm -hmm. Um, and she got to do some like hands-on stuff. So yeah, I think she learned a lot. She was so excited. She said it's the best field trip she ever took. Yes. So, <laughs> I, so the, a lot of things you said in there was really, really interesting and just brought to mind just the comparisons between homeschooling and the freedom. You said freedom, Yes. right? The, the flexibility mm -hmm. that you have when you're not, your day isn't you don't have to follow the strict schedule because you're trying to manage right. some campuses, 2000 kids, Yeah, you know, like you, when you have a campus that big, you have no flexibility in the schedule. People have to be here somewhere mm -hmm. at a certain time. Yeah. Class have to start at a certain time, have to finish at a certain time. Right. Like, and you have standards too, that you have to follow. Yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. you have to, you have to get kids to a certain point because you have to do the testing and stuff like Correct. that. So kids have yes. to be at a certain point at a certain time. Correct. The bin, yes, yeah. exactly. And and not just one child. Right. All a of them. room on a spectrum mm -hmm. of learners. Um, but then the field trip thing too, like campuses, some campuses maybe take one or two field trips a mm -hmm. year, you know, certain mm -hmm. classes. Um, but you have to have funding for that. Right. And then you have to get transportation right. for that. Mm -hmm. And then you have to write all, get permission slips. 
it's you have a, to, it's a whole ordeal. it is to take a class somewhere to take someone's most prized possession, 30 mm-hmm. or 40 of them yeah. somewhere, you know, like if you get chaperones, it is a whole thing yeah. to make that happen. So it is really is again, the, the money mm-hmm. is a big thing that deters field trips from happening. But again, the whole administrative side of just making that happen yeah. to get kids out there with those real world experiences, it is an endeavor. And there's teachers out there that are doing it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. But you, you can't knock the fact that if you want your kid to learn about stalactites and stalagmites yeah you know just throw them in the car and go to the inner space caverns you know if you're homeschooling right right? you know so like and that's the thing we can take field trips you know once a week if we want to mm -hmm. not once a year Mm -hmm. you know um because being stationary we're not able to to travel and anything right now but i still have that flexibility to go and take her to do those hands-on experiences out in the world yes yes and so that's cool i'm glad to hear that i'm glad mm-hmm. you're enjoying it and that freedom thing it's making it's making a lot of sense you yeah. know it's really really cool yeah so another one of the things that we were when we were planning to move into this full time mm-hmm. we were worried about texas summer yes um w- being in an rv full-time mm-hmm. in the texas heat yeah uh make sure we kept it cool enough and make yeah. it comfortable enough and i i think we're we're on the other side of it I think we're getting there. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's it's getting cooler in the mornings. Yes. It's getting colder. Mm-hmm. We there the tropical storm went through on the southeast, um, and we got a l- little bit. It said it was going to rain. Yeah, it didn't rain. It's sprinkled. Like, yeah, a yeah. Couple of times, but, but we got some cloud cover, mm-hmm. and that really helped Cooled cool it, off. Cool it was nice. quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we're we're on the other side of this, and then comes this time next year, we're not going to be here. You know, so mm-hmm. like the big weather hurdle that we worried about being in the RV before they we can get into. Mm-hmm you know, pretty much chasing the nice weather. Yeah. You know, we've made kind of jumped that hurdle. Mm -hmm. Um, So last week wasn't too bad. You know, this week's nicer. um, Yeah. And it's going to be even nicer this week, apparently. Yeah, there's a cold front coming through, apparently. So (laughs) it'll it'll bring the temperature down, um, especially in the mornings. Mm -hmm. Um, It'll finally be, like, really nice in the mornings. Um, And then throughout the day, I think we've been in the high 90s for a while, but I think it's going to start getting back down into the 80s, which is is Mm -hmm. really comfortable for us yes <laughs> so we uh we'll talk some more about the waggle but uh mm-hmm. we that thing keeps track of the temperature inside the rv yes and until we got it we kind of was, we didn't know what mm-hmm. the temperature was we just knew that it wasn't 74 degrees because the AC our ac cut would not cut off yeah. because it was always on it was like and we haven't set at 74 so we knew that it was not ever getting to mm-hmm. 74 degrees mm-hmm. and so uh finally we, you know get the waggle in there and we see what temperature it is inside it's like 80 degrees it's like, 80. It's like it doesn't feel like 80 no, it's, it, it probably is 80 but we've acclimated <laughs> yeah. to where we don't even yeah, as, yeah. Long, as long as you're not up and moving around and like doing anything then if you're just resting and yeah. at 80 degrees it feels really nice yeah 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 <laughs> so well we're looking forward to that definitely and yes. it'll give us more opportunities again charlie you mentioned last episode to be able to work outside mm-hmm. to do more things outside and we can do these more field trips and stuff too you know we can go out to these places because right now it's just been too hot to really yes. go and, and enjoy doing anything mm-hmm. I'm excited to, when we we moved into it, we went and uh, vacuum sealed our mm-hmm. long sleeve shirts and yeah. coats and jackets and they're inside. Mm-hmm. So we're going to now, here in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be pulling that out, taking yep. our summer clothes, vacuum sealing them, swapping them out yep. with, with the winter clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, went ahead and changed out some things in the wardrobe, got rid of summer clothes that we couldn't fit anymore, that we aren't going to be able to fit next year. Because again, you always, you can't just keep taking in stuff. Yeah. As you bring in, once new, you bring in stuff, you have you to take get, out. get rid of new stuff because <laughs> yes. the weight limit and everything. So just like that's been a interesting process that mm-hmm. I know we're probably going to do every year. Yeah. Um, but I'm looking forward to because I'm looking forward to the cool, cooler mm-hmm. weather. Definitely. So with the weather, right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, that was going to be one of the hard things that the hurdle that we had to jump mm-hmm. that we planned that we knew and we yeah. counted on. You know, yeah. that we have to do. We're able to plan for that. But if anybody who's spent any kind of time in, in an RV will tell you there are so many hurdles that kind of pop up yeah. without any planning, any notice mm-hmm. whatsoever. And I was talking with some coworkers of mine and kind of when I came to this, talking about just living in it and mm-hmm. mindset. And it's the first time I said it, but I was like, it's so true. It's like we've developed this task oriented mm-hmm. mindset, like yep. this mission mindset, like the next step every day is something that needs to be accomplished. Mm-hmm. And you're just working through it. And so when something new comes up, you're already in that mindset of problem solving. Right. You know, like in uh, so one that we ran into is we got a safety recall mm-hmm. on the StarCraft, the, the, the propane, propane regulator. pressure regulator. Mm-hmm. And so we, of course, with the boom and everything and the 
big RV lots around here. Um, it's going to take probably about two months. They say that yeah. and we'd have to bring it in. We can't just bring in the part. We can't swap it out ourselves. Um, so we're sitting here just already in the mindset. We're just thinking about how can we solve this? Mm -hmm. If you have any solutions where this has happened to you before, yeah. um, or you've gone or already got your safety recall swapped out, go ahead and let us know in the comments. Yeah. Um, reach out to us. Let us know what your solution is. We're currently working through ideas because we live in this thing. We can't give right. it up for two months. Right. Um, so Charlie's initial thought is just, well, let's just find a smaller RV place, RV that place that yeah. won't take so long. We only, I mean, we only looked at one in mm -hmm. the area. And there it, are other ones. I mean, we may have to drive a little bit further, but mm -hmm. maybe we can make it out at like a weekend trip or something like that mm -hmm. and go and drop this thing off and hopefully, you know, we'll yeah. figure something out. So we don't need the propane yet, right? right. We haven't really used it all summer because mm -hmm. it's hot. Um, I don't think we'll need it for the fall. Not for a while. Yeah, I don't not, think we're going to need it till like after Christmas. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it gets cold, mm -hmm. but not uncomfortably cold until like january yeah and our, our rv has a fortunately an electric water heater mm -hmm. as well as a propane water heater so mm -hmm. we can still take hot showers yeah. even without propane right um but as far as like the furnace and everything you know we're kind of kicking that can down the road but potential figure out how to do it potential <laughs> crisis yeah. uh, so we're, we're working through it but one that kind of jumped up on us mm -hmm. um unfortunately the, the other day charlie got rear-ended yeah uh and in the colonial one the truck and mm -hmm. Uh, of course, I was worried about her, um, but then my first thought, she got rear-ended. Right. You know, and then... And, where hitches. And the back is where the hitch is. Right. And we have trips lined up mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So I'm thinking, man, if the hitch is damaged, we're stuck. What do we do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're stuck. And I don't... I mean, I, that's another thing. Like, what, what, do, what do people do in this situation? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I know it's going to take a long time to get it fixed just because with everything right now, it just takes a long time to get these things taken care of i know i'm gonna have to drop the truck off mm -hmm. and then it's it may be a while before it gets it gets fixed so like what do people who full-time like do in this situation you know like what if there's something wrong with your vehicle and you have to get it fixed like mm -hmm. what do you do yes um so we're trying to figure that out and work through that right now too so the she was not at fault she got rear-ended so right, I, I was at a stop sign i mean yeah. this this person i i'm pretty sure they were on their phone mm -hmm. um they just i was stopped at a stop sign and she just rear-ended me so it, it wasn't that bad we weren't going you know excessive speeds or anything like that i'm thinking again i'm problem solving my initial thought is you would have money set aside mm -hmm. for things like this mm -hmm. and i could buy a bumper you know i would probably take the truck somewhere and have them inspect the frame inspect the hitch and as long as that was okay right I could buy a bumper and I could take a bumper off and put a bumper back on. Mm -hmm. I could do that myself. So that's something really important is be handy, yeah. right? Living in an RV full time. Um, but if there's some more damage done to it than that, then we would definitely have to get really flexible and mm -hmm. really innovative and, and come up with solutions. So again, if you've had that experience before, like something happened in your vehicle mm -hmm. and you threw off your travel schedule and you had to stay somewhere longer than you intended, kind of just tell us what your experience was, share us a bit of knowledge with us and kind of help us problem solve and work through um, yeah. our potential crises coming up down the road. Yeah. Um, but again, another, what we want to talk about this episode has a lot to do with the weather. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's because we travel with two furry crewmates yes, and they, while we might be content mm -hmm. being inside, no, sometimes they, they, they can't do that. <laughs> we were, they're not the super smart cats that know how to use the toilet. Yeah. And then again, I don't even know they would know how to do the push pedal to flush the toilet inside I mean, of an you RV. Could, that, you could train them. <laughs> it might be a whole thing. <laughs> but they do have to go outside. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, we're just going to talk about today. We're going to talk about pets. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about, in particular, our two pets, mm -hmm. our two furry crewmates, um, Hilo and Apollo. Yep. So you tell me about Hilo. So Hilo, uh, he's a, he's five. Um, he's five years old. We got him when he was a puppy. Um, he's a corgi. Um and he he's he's more my dog um he's he's my he's my furry crew member <laughs> uh i wanted him i wanted a, a court we had a court um before um and then i wanted another one so we got we got hilo about five years ago um and so yeah he, he's he's my little furry crew member he he's he's a little rambunctious <laughs> he's a corgi no, so he man. has he has a corgi attitude um he has the what is it called napoleon um syndrome syndrome yes. yes um he thinks he's a big dog but he's not he's not no <laughs> so where did you get him from uh a breeder yeah 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 we got him from a breeder um i drove about three and a half hours to get him um it was one of those things you, you set it up ahead of time you know as soon as as soon as he's 
dogs are born, you want to get on them because they're hard to find. Mm -hmm. Um, so we paid a good amount of money for him because he's a corgi. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so, um, yeah. Yeah. But he's a, he's a, again, he is, I would say our guard dog. Yes. Like physically, like like physically, like does he he alerts to everything, Mm -hmm. you know, um, he sees, you know, because they're they're herders, but they also they use them to go after bur- things that burrow, mm-hmm. like you know, like rabbits, yeah. you know, little stuff. Like, and he can see it. Like he sees tiny he sees things far away. Like mm-hmm. yeah, like tiny stuff that we he's, wouldn't see. He's you just alert. see his ear, those ears yeah. go go up, and he's ready to go. So he is definitely the bark, yes. right? Um, and we, we only say that in comparison to our to our other dog. He's not an excessive barker, though. I mean, he, he he's he trained. Bark- yeah, he's we've trained him well, mm-hmm. um, but he does bark and uh, and alert us um, to, mm-hmm. to things. Yes, and he's vocal. Like if, mm-hmm. if he needs to go outside, you know, mm-hmm. give us a little little, little wolf, like hey, I need I need to go outside. Like <laughs> yeah. so, he's he's a good dog, a really good dog. Mm-hmm. Um, just a brat, you know. Like he's a corgi. Like yeah. you know, they're gonna he's gonna. A I think he, he was he he was a lot worse, obviously, when he was younger. Um, but I think he's hitting that like mid age, mid mid level age now, and so he's he's mellowing out a lot. Yeah. Um, then he's uh, he's but it's, he's a corgi, mm-hmm. and so everybody sees me. Like, oh, oh yeah. But he's really sometimey about I don't know what it who, is. Like who he wants to get close to. Him. Some people he just rolls in the back and like yes, yes, and he soaks it out. But then some people he's just like nope. Mm-hmm. nope and it's very interesting to see the type of people that he's like you know mm-hmm. like don't touch me yes you know so he's not just a all-around friendly dog yeah he's and i have no idea what it is what like it is. i can't figure it out i mean yeah. I, at first i thought it was like colors other, like men like yeah. he didn't like men but then he's fine with some men mm-hmm. um and then i thought it was like certain like women and then that, that didn't <laughs> I, I don't know it's weird like yeah. he, there's just some people he just does not like i don't yeah. know if he, it's the smell of them or what mm-hmm. <laughs> so Hilo, right? His name, obviously, like yes. everything, we've named him after uh, one of the Battlestar Galactica mm-hmm. characters. So I think we, I mean, we've all obviously been fans of the show, you know, forever. Um, and so when we got him, um, that was one of the things we were trying to figure out was what to name him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't remember how we got on to naming him well, we went the through Battlestar the, Galactica The character. characters? Yeah. I can't remember why we, we, yeah. we wanted to do that. Yeah. Um, but... Hilo's one of my favorite characters um, in the show, and so that's why we kind of decided on Hilo for him. Because, mm-hmm. like I said, he he's 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 more my dog. I mean, yeah. you got him, you know, for me, like as, mm-hmm. as my dog. So it was you know my choice to kind of name him. And we just didn't consider even. We just thought Hilo sounds like a really cool name. Yeah. We didn't consider personalities in the show or anything like well, that. Well, no, because he was a puppy. I mean, yes. he was a baby. Yeah, he didn't really he have, have a personality, personality yet. Though, yeah. So. <laughs> It's interesting how this all shaked out. So yes. that, that's 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 crewmate number one. And oh, he's about what six inches tall? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> he's a corgi. He's, a corgi. he's like this big and like this, this long. No, he's not. And like this wide, this wide. Um, but then our other dog, Apollo. He's our he's our rescue. Um, we were we had you know we had the corgi and we knew that we got him from a puppy mill you know it's because we wanted a corgi you're not going to find those at shelters right. you know like um but there we do understand that there's an issue with overbreeding and dogs in the mm-hmm. shelters and i have no issue with shelter dogs my first dog my own personal first dog um was from a shelter and then you know so i had no issue with going and finding another one and mm-hmm. we saw this one winston was his name mm-hmm. and we saw him on social media from the local an- animal shelter and we're like oh you know we got to go meet him. Yeah. You know, he's an older guy. He needed a home. He's like, well, we got to go get him. And we got there and somebody had already adopted yeah. him. So we were looking around and then we see this. He still looked big. Yeah. He was still, he was big, but he wasn't as big as he, but he was. He was blacked out mm-hmm. and he was in this kennel by himself. And uh, just this husk, he looked like a wolf. Yeah. His well, white really wasn't we, that. We walked another dog before him, too. Yeah. Yeah. So there was there was one that we walked before him. And then he yeah. was actually the second dog that we yeah. took out and walked around. But he wasn't, you know, I can't really remember, like, what he was doing then. But I don't remember him being, like, over the top, mm-hmm. like, at all. But he was just massive and he looked like a wolf. His name was Ulf. Ulf. U-L-F. Mm-hmm. U-L-F. Yeah. And uh, so it was like, okay, yes, he's cool. He's awesome. Let's walk mm-hmm. him. And we took him out. You know, he, he was really big. Chill. But really chill. Yeah. Um, and then we tried to put him. We did the paperwork and everything. Yeah. And then we tried to put him in the car yeah. and tried to pick him up. He whined. And we realized how not chill he was. <laughs> he touched him and only like under his arms to, you know, help him jump in. And he freaks out. Just like that's yes. when like he's a husky through and through mm-hmm. vocal. He screamed bloody murder. Yes. Um, 
He was 60 pounds. 60, yep. Today he is... Well, he was 60 pounds, um, and like we had him for a few days, mm-hmm. and I was like, there's something wrong with him. Like, he's mm-hmm. not he's not acting like he should, right? Mm-hmm. He was really laying around, barely moving. Wasn't I, th- I think he stopped eating. Um, and so I had to take him to the vet anyways because... Follow-up. The follow-up. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was maybe four or five days after we got him. Um, I had to take him to the vet, and the vet's like, yeah, he has kind of cough. Yeah. And we're like... Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. Yes. Yes. So we had to get medicine for him and everything like that. Um, they treated it and everything. And the, the shelter gave us some medicine. They, you know, they paid for it and stuff like that. Gave us some meds to, to get him better. So then we got him, you know, back to health. And then he was up and moving around a lot more. And, and he, then he gained a lot of weight. Oh, yes. my God. <laughs> yes, he is over 100 pounds right so now. We it, don't know the exact amount because he's scared of the scale. So when we go to the vet, we can't get, moving we around. can't get him yeah. on there and sit there for a few minutes, but mm. the last read was like 103 pounds. Good grief. <laughs> um but he is he's a guard dog visually, yes. a guard dog cuz he again he's tall. Mm-hmm. Uh, we think he's mixed with maybe German shepherd maybe. and mm-hmm. husky. Um black, he's all blacked out. He's got some white spots on him. Um don't tell anyone, but his bark is worse than his bite. And then he doesn't even bark. He doesn't. He is very docile, Mm -hmm. very easygoing, very chill, gentle giant. Um, Very well behaved. He responds well to training. You know, he likes routines. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like things deviating from, you know, he's not irregular. Unlike his little (laughs) friend, he's just like, he likes his stuff where it's at. He likes to be inside. He knows what time it is, what time it is so that he goes outside. Like he, he, he knows Mm -hmm. like he's, yeah, he's on a schedule. So he was, they said in the paperwork when he brought that, brought him in, they thought he was two. Yeah. Um, there's no way to know. I mean, it's yeah. a, it's an estimate. Yeah, um, and sure then he, we, he was around that age, but he seems to have grayed out a lot since yeah, we've had him. Yeah, and we've had, we've had him five years mm-hmm. too. Um, so he's like he's at least seven, at if least not seven, more. if not more. Yeah, and mm-hmm. he's the whites coming in. So that's another thing that again we're talking about today. So these are our boys, um, mm-hmm. and just some pros and cons of having the dogs that we've seen. Uh, living with them in the RV Mm -hmm. is again, Hilo is that extra security measure, Mm -hmm. you know, he is the vocal alarm, like the audio alarm. And then Apollo is that extra visual security Mm -hmm. measure. Yeah. Um, he probably wouldn't hurt a fly, honestly. I mean, don't tell anyone, (laughs) but we, but all we have to do is walk him around an RV lot Mm -hmm. once or twice and people see him and they're just like, yeah. You know, not that we're trying to keep people away, but they, you know, anyone thinking of coming into our campsite will they think twice, especially if dogs. he's, you know, we got him hooked up outside. You know, mm-hmm. our thing is pet friendly. It's got a little latch right there on the door. Like they can be hooked up and out on our mat and area. Mm-hmm. They'll think twice before walking over here because he's, yeah. he's a big dog. Um, so added security, of course, is definitely a pro mm-hmm. of having dogs, right, mm-hmm. in particular. But there's tons of other pets that you could have, but dogs bring that extra level of security because mm-hmm. you become one of them, their family, their pack, and they're going to protect you. You know, yeah. they're, you know. Yep. Um, and then playmates for Maddie, you know, mm-hmm. Apollo is, is a pretty big dog. He doesn't like to play too much. He does like to cuddle, mm-hmm. you know, so you, you see her cuddling and they've really bonded in the RV because yeah. kind of her space that she, she operates and lives in, he, you know, he's in the same area. And so they're really close together and it's really cool to see just kind of the big dog, like looking yeah. after your little, your baby girl. Um, but then Hilo, you know, he, he plays like he's a player, he's yes. a baby, you know, and so, uh, him and Maddie, you know, they. They'll play quite a bit. So this gives her someone to play with. Mm-hmm. She doesn't have any siblings. There aren't going to be any siblings in the near future, like little siblings, rather, little siblings, that'll yeah. play with her. <laughs> um, so whenever we're occupied doing something else, then an extra playmate for Maddie. Yeah. Um, and then probably the coolest pro, I think, is just there's another member of the family. Yeah. Like we've and I've had to leave dog one dog behind before. Um, hindsight, I probably shouldn't have. Probably if I could do it again, I wouldn't have. Um, but it was military orders at the last minute, you know, mm-hmm. and the place that we could get my family into just it wasn't dog friendly. Mm-hmm. And so we had to leave them behind. And that's that's stayed with me for the longest time, you know, like. Um, and then. Because then my other dog, my rescue dog, like lived in a bunch of apartments or really didn't have a big yard. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, I'm just trying to trying to keep her alive and keep her with me until I can get into a house and a big yard and, yeah. you know, give her. And uh, she didn't make it, unfortunately, you know, like, but 
I just did not want to leave them, leave them behind. I don't want to leave in it. You know, they're a part of the family. Right. And then, so when we decided to do this life, mm -hmm. you know, and it was just like, we had to figure it out. Did, <laughs> you probably didn't see it. It was massive. What, what was it? I don't know what it was. I don't want to know. He's gone. He's, he's going on with his life. I'm going on with mine. Um, but yeah, like, so we, to, to make this move going from 2,500 square feet to 250 square feet, like we have these dogs and we're just like, we could have been like, you know, it won't be easy having them with us yeah. and thought of all the reasons yeah. why to rehome them, whatever. No, no. <laughs> you know, they're part of the family. They're right. coming with us. We're going to figure this out. And it's been, we've been better off for it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm absolutely glad that we are all going together to do this. Mm -hmm. They've taken some really cool hikes with us, gone to some really cool places, been outside and played in some really cool places. Mm -hmm. And I think this will be, you know, better for them. I think it'll extend the life of, you know, Apollo, you oh, know, yeah, like sure. given, mm -hmm. you know, from what we heard, he was on the street for a long time, you yeah. know, before they found him and, you know, just kind of give him a slower life, you know, just get out and relax and enjoy himself. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm excited to give that to him. Yeah. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's not. Living with the dog no. in 250 <laughs> square feet. Yeah. Um, so what are some cons that you would say? Uh, well, we definitely, we can't sleep in. Um, we have, we have to get up and you have <laughs> yes. to take them out, um, in the mornings. Um, and then you have to, you have to factor that into your day too. Like, yes. so you get up and if you have somewhere to be, you have to factor in the time that you need to take yes. the dogs out. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, I mean, we, we always like to get up early anyways, just because it gives you the full amount of day, day. to like yeah. figure out what to do with your day. Um, so I don't mind it, you know, getting up early. Um, and then one of the biggest cons too is we have to share the dog park ah, you know yes. um so we have to get up early enough to where we know nobody else is going to be at the dog park so that we can get in there first mm -hmm. um so we get up while well, he gets up a little bit earlier than i do to take them out yeah but. yeah yeah and, and it's not we've talked about this before i think on the episode it's not that we don't mind having our dogs around other people because mm -hmm. we know our dogs will be fine right um we just don't want to find out if their dog's not fine mm -hmm. or one day Hilo he, he rolls over yeah. on the wrong side of the mat and then just decides to go with somebody else's dog. Like, yeah. I, I don't want... It's a risk I'm not willing to take. Yeah, it's not it's not worth it. It really right. isn't. Like, I, I think we're past the point of socializing them. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with them not being socialized. Right. I have no problem with keeping them away from other people's dogs, mm -hmm. keeping them on the leash all the time. Yeah. Um, so with that comes my choice to do that. Our mm -hmm. choice to do that comes we need to be able to get into the dog park mm -hmm. while other people aren't there. Yeah. Um, and so there's a bit of a rotation that happens. Someone will go in and another person will go in. And so in order to kind of beat that rush mm -hmm. in the mornings, we have to get up really, really early, yeah. kind of be the first ones in there. Right. Um, and that's only because we're working, mm -hmm. right? Cause I need to be to work at a certain time. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have to be working at a certain time, I could just sit there and drink my coffee and wait till they were done, then go. Yeah. But, you know, so I think that'll definitely change once I'm no longer on the nine to five, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, that is a bit of a con, you know, cause I would just rather take them outside. You yeah, know, and you anyway. can't do that, you know, like, I mean, there is like little grassy patches around here, mm -hmm. um, but I, we've trained them to go in the dog park. So even if we one day we're like in a hurry and we want to just have, take them out here real quick, they won't do it because they've been trained to go they to the dog park they, and to go to the bathroom there. Yeah, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, then, you know, of course, they're it's a corgi and a husky. Mm -hmm. They are covered in hair. Okay, in hair. Their yes. bodies are covered in hair yes. and then they cover everything around them in here yes and so it is a never-ending yes. losing battle <laughs> it's a losing battle it is trying to maintain and keep the fur yes. down um, i do get them fur miniature treatments every mm -hmm. six weeks or so six to eight weeks um so that helps a lot um because it, it actually pulls the hair out um the deep coat the yeah deep coat the pull, hair that's not stuck yeah, yeah it pulls it out and they get like 20 minutes of brushing or something like that um mm -hmm. so that helps a lot um but of course they still shed like no matter what even that ferminator treatment doesn't stop them from shedding it just helps mm -hmm. decrease it yes so and it's not like they're walking around every day like doing a <laughs> <laughs> they literally just by sitting they're just sitting there you can see like little <laughs> clouds of fur just falling yes. off of them <laughs> yes. um so that's kind of Maddie's task or chores. Like she's doing the daily maintenance on the fur. And that's what it comes down to is just maintenance. As mm -hmm. long as you like do a general sweep mm -hmm. uh, once a day, it doesn't get out of control. Right. Um, but yeah, there every now and then I'll, you know, roll over and there's hair, you know, all across my computer. Mm -hmm. There's hair in my 
you know, deodorant. There's yeah. hair in my food. It's yeah. just like, it is That's what fine. it is. It yeah. is what it is. Yeah. And so Charlie got this really cool sign that says, you know, fur is just part of the decor around here. Yeah. Like, you, you just say, <laughs> it, it is, is what it is. You have to get used to it. Yeah. And yeah. I've seen some really cool signs too, where it's, if someone's coming to your home and like, mm-hmm. if you have a problem with hair on your clothes, don't come over. Don't wear black. No, don't wear black. Yeah. <laughs> don't come over. Like, it's just like, you got to just, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a con, but it's totally worth it. Yeah. But then again, there's dogs out there that don't shed nowhere near as much as the breeds that we have. Yeah. Um, we but just, yeah. We just have shedders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> so just maintenance is really the way you get around that. Mm-hmm. But again, it was really hard to to really just quantify the pros. Mm-hmm. This is why the list is so short. But really the cons, there's this list is so small because there's very few cons yeah. about having the pets with us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you say like once you get them on a schedule, mm-hmm. that's a good thing mm-hmm. until it's not, until you have to flex that schedule. Right. You know, so that's why I think that. But our dogs a... are older too. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, if we have to change the schedule, they'll, they'll adjust really well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, they're not puppies. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think it would be a lot harder if they were puppies, mm-hmm. like trying to figure out a schedule and a routine, if, yeah. you know, but our dogs are older. So it's, it's, that helps a lot. And they don't graze. Like we, we have set times that we feed them mm-hmm. and then we give them opportunities to use the bathroom, mm-hmm. you know, reasonably with that. So they know like I'm eating at this time and they have set times to use the bathroom. So that ever like they really, really have to go, mm-hmm. you know, when they're not able to. Right. Yeah. So we've kind of worked, worked around and made mm-hmm. sure that was okay. Yeah. Um, but so speaking of care and mm-hmm. taking of the care of them, there's mm-hmm. a lot of different essential things. Yes. That you, we needed to do to make this work. Right. Living with, you know, the Heal and Apollo mm-hmm. and, and pets inside the RV. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the things that we've implemented, essential things that are necessary when mm-hmm. living with a pet in an RV? So one of the things um, that I think is kind of the most important that I didn't even think about until we were already living in here is the fact that, you know, the dogs are in here um, and we leave and we go somewhere. Um, if we're gone for an extended period of time, what happens if there's a power outage um, and the AC is off. And and again, this is only during the summertime. Mm-hmm. Um, but what happens if there's a power outage and the AC goes off? Um, how will how will we know? You mm-hmm. know, because we won't know. Um, or what, ha- you know, if, if something happens to the AC and it just cuts off, you know, we wouldn't know. Um, and so then the dogs are inside mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. excessive heat, 100 degrees outside. These things are not insulated at all. So it gets hot very quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in a six and bricks, if your AC goes out or the power goes out, it's not that bad, you know, like it's going to take hours before it gets uncomfortable in your house because mm-hmm. it's so big. But this space, these things, again, they're not insulated. It gets hot very quickly if the AC goes out. So one of the things, um, you know, we had to think about was what, what do we do? You know, what, what, how do we monitor that? If the power does go out, how do we monitor the temperature inside? Um, if we want to go shopping or something and be gone, you know, for the entire day. Um, so I actually did some research and found this device, Waggle. Do you have it? <laughs> yep. So this, this is, is it's waggle. Um, and so this, uh, you just hook it into the RV. There's a little, um, what's it called? A little plate sticks on. This um, monitors the temperature of the RV. And then it also, you can hook it up here to the charging device and it will tell you if there's a power outage as well. Um, so this is a, a nice little device that I found. Um, it is a subscription service. You do have to pay for a subscription. Um, it is, it's its own wireless connection. It, it works on the Verizon network. It has its own connection. So it works even if there's a power outage. Um, it tells you what the temperature is in the RV. And, um, and again, if it's connected, it will tell you if the power goes out. And this is good because it alerts you as well. That's what I meant to get a text <laughs> where message. I'm going. Yeah. Um, you get a text message. And so if we're out and about, shopping or something like that, it will send me a text message that says the RV has a power outage or the RV is in, it's, is getting too hot. I think I have it set to where if it gets above 80 degrees, it will um, send me an alert. And so then every 10 minutes, it's constantly texting you too what the temperature is in your RV. So um, that's good to have, right? Mm, you know, so when we're out and about, um, if, if something were to happen, we would know and we can immediately come back you know, to, to, to get the dogs out. Mm-hmm. So they're not in this oven, Correct. you know, yes. with, if, if it were to happen. Yes. So it's definitely something that is worth having. Um, you definitely want to look into it if you're considering doing this lifestyle with pets, because you just, you don't want to take that risk of, oh, of no. the AC going out and them being in there for hours at a time. So, um, it's subscription service. Mm-hmm. Is it a contract at all? Or is it month to month? Um, there's different, 
there's different plans that you can choose from. Mm -hmm. You can do it to bill it for, you know, three months at a time. You can do it for a year at a time. Um, I did the one for two years. Mm -hmm. um, so you pay for it all up front. You pay the whole subscription up front. Um, if you pay for the two years, it's cheaper. Gotcha. Um, it's like $10 a month if you do it for two years. Um, or if you do it for every three months, I think is the, the, the lowest one that you can do. Um, but it, I think it was like $20 a month. Ooh, if gotcha. you do it that way. Okay. So it's cheaper, you know, to, to do it like well, that. Well, yeah. So you think about it, if you live in a place like, you know, Texas, mm -hmm. where really the only concern, I don't know, even during the fall and the spring, we get some pretty hot days. We do. But not that bad. Now right. we're, you could leave the windows open. During the summer, you cannot leave the windows open. Right. So if you didn't want to pay for a whole year, maybe you, you put out the 60 bucks, mm -hmm. you know, and you pay for just the three months of summer. Right. You know, so that's that's an option mm -hmm. for you. You know, make it more affordable. And more, yeah. More I mean, useful. we're in the cold too, right? So, I mean, if you're up in like colder weather and, and stuff like that. Certain temperature below. Yeah, yeah. If you're like below zero or something, then you want to know if, if the power goes out again too, because then your propane turns off and then it's getting um, yeah, yeah. cold Very good point. in there. Um, so Very good point. Okay. Well, then it works both ways. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so with another level, just really while you're away, it's just because again, in a house, there's more space. Um, there's, while well, things could go bad in a house, mm -hmm. I think with just the nature of the RV and how it's designed, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're threading the needle, Yeah. you know, like things are great until they're not, until they're not. Yes. you know, and <laughs> things can, things cannot be great. They can go wrong when you're not there because yeah. just the nature of this thing and all the things that make it kind of work. Mm -hmm. Um, so being able to have a presence and see what's going on and monitoring your RV is mm -hmm. really important. Yes. Um, so we did the waggle, but we also got a little blink mini camera mm -hmm. that is also Wi-Fi hook up that yep. whole deal. Mm -hmm. Um, that way we can, we can look at, yeah. them, you know, and it has a, 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 yeah, it has a, uh, a, a microphone mm -hmm. so we can talk to them. Um, but yeah, so we just got set up in there and you can see kind of the whole floor space where they are going to be at. Just kind of check up on them, um, different things like that. And then that goes in line with the waggle. So it does, the way yeah. that so I'm seeing it is if it, we're like hours away and that we get this alert that the power is out or something like that, while well, I can monitor the temperature with, with the waggle, but I can also check in on the dogs too yes. to make sure they're not getting overheated or something. We can check to make sure that they're okay while we're in the process of getting back to them. Yes. And or send someone over if we can't make it in time. Right. You know, like yeah. Mm -hmm. So just again that that extra measure of, of looking after, you know, your furry crewmates, mm -hmm. uh, make sure they're taking care of and monitoring your RV when they're, and then it's also another added of layer of security. Mm -hmm. Like right. I'm, I'm watching the dogs, but of course I can also see the RV and what's happening inside the RV when right. we're not there. Even mm -hmm. if they're with us, I can still use it as to that. See. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so then there was something else, the, uh, Oh yeah. So I haven't done it yet. Um, but I, I'm going to, to get, um, they have these Apple, um, tags now mm -hmm. um and you can i think you get like a bundle of them. i think it's four you get like for four it's 99 dollars. Mm -hmm. um but these little tags you can put on various different things people put them on their keys people put them on um various other things their glasses you know st stuff they don't want to lose um but they make little tags that you can put them for for your dogs you put them on their collars mm -hmm. and it has gps tracking it works the same with app other apple devices you can see like find my iphone or whatever app um, and it'll tell you where they're at. And I think that's really important, especially when we're traveling, mm -hmm. right? Because if the dog were to get out and it runs away, you cannot spend a lot of time, you know, especially if you have to be somewhere else and you're traveling, you cannot spend a lot of time like searching mm -hmm. for your dog. Um, and so the GPS tracking, I think, is really helpful um, in this case. That way you can find them pretty quickly yes. um, and get them back. Just go right there. Yeah. So I haven't gotten them yet, but I am going to get those. And it's just, it's it's Apple ID tag. It goes on their collar. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, it works with the, the Find My iPhone app and you can track them. And that's really, again, why we haven't got it yet. It's not a burning cr concern. Mm -hmm. um, we found that, again, Apollo likes to be inside yes. he likes to be in that space he, he doesn't has like, like we've been at the dog park before and he actually got out because i just at the gate on accident um and he ran right back to the he RV. just comes right back and he's like he's like nope uh, <laughs> he doesn't want to be outside when he's we were showing the house when we were going to sell it oh yeah <laughs> we someone had we we kept them inside you know um in a room but someone had went in the backyard and mm -hmm. they had opened the gate yeah. And they didn't close it back. And we didn't check the gate when we let the boys outside once we got back home. Mm -hmm. And so the gate was open. So they 
they were out. And it took us a while. Like, I don't know how, how much time went by. It was like 20 or 30 minutes. It yeah. was a while before I realized, like, I looked out there yeah, and, and the dogs out. weren't back there. <laughs> so I was like, oh, gosh. And so, like, oh, my God. So we were freaking out. So we had to run to the front door. We open it. And Apollo just sit there sitting like, there. Like, he's ready to come excuse inside. Excuse me. Like, <laughs> yes. it's hot out here. I want to come inside. <laughs> so he's, he's very. So I don't see that being an issue. But it is definitely a concern of being out there on the road. You know, you're passing through a place, mm-hmm. you know, that you've never been before. They've never been before. Um, and again, the boys, they, they, they follow us. They listen really well. It's not like if they ever get off the leash that they'll just run. Right. They're not those kind of dogs, but I'm, I'm worried if, if they see something, mm-hmm. you know, and it gets their attention, especially Hilo and he'll yeah. chase it. And yeah. I can see Apollo chasing Hilo. Mm-hmm. And before they know it, they get too far They've away. They've lost sight of they us. They find their way they back. Yeah. 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 So this is definitely something we're going to get mm-hmm. and look into because yeah, yeah, we're not going to leave anybody behind. Yeah, and it's not a subscription service thing either. I mean, it, you buy the tag. You just buy the tag. Um, and sync it, it to your phone. Yeah, you sync it. It's just you, you have to have an Apple device mm-hmm. um, to, to monitor it, though, like an iPhone or something like that. Cool. Um, but it works with the uh, your Apple um, account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is really things that that we are doing that, we, that were essential for your kind of you and mm-hmm. your dog and your safety of your pets. Um, caring for them in an RV, mm-hmm. uh, but there's in this RV community, like you interact with people, right. unless you're like a boondocker, right. you know, and you don't get around people. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of things that you have to take into you take into You're going to be right next to people. You don't mm-hmm. have your own yard, your own space. Um, maybe a little bit more than you normally would with the house, mm-hmm. you know, because people are out and about more in RV parks. You're probably mm-hmm. going to interact with more people. Again, you're taking your dog to and from place for them to use the bathroom so be running into interacting with people right um so yeah just some things to consider uh sign on the door letting mm-hmm. them know that you know there's dogs inside yeah. um, especially if something were to happen to the rv you know like mm-hmm. if it were to catch fire or something you know mm-hmm. like if there's a sign on the door it lets people know like there's dogs inside you know help get them out mm-hmm. something like that yep yep mm-hmm. um then we already talked about the dog park and and whether or not pets are allowed so this is considering the fact that you need to find a place to stay if you've got pets like obviously you're yeah gonna... and some places don't allow mm-hmm. dogs or, yes. or pets um, yes. so that's something you have to consider if mm-hmm. when you're you know making your travel plans um you have to find places that will accept dogs yes and they'll accept your type of dogs because some of them do have breed restrictions mm-hmm. um and weight restrictions too um so <laughs> <laughs> you will have to consider that um, no, you're not going to be able to get into every single RV park that you want to because some of them might have um, restrictions on the dogs. Mm-hmm. And you might list that as a con, but I think there's more than enough parks out there that, mm-hmm. you know, that you can find a place to go right. with your dog. Right. And then, I mean, worst case scenario, fill up your, your fresh water tank. Go boondock. Go boondock somewhere, you know, <laughs> let your dog experience the yeah. world. Um, so one thing that was really important when we were shopping for our RV is we were considering the space, mm-hmm. right? Like we knew how many people were going to be in there. We knew the boys was going to be in there. Right. Um, but we, so Apollo, he isn't, he doesn't tear up stuff. Right. Again, he just lays around, big, lazy, easy going one. Hilo, he's a pup, you know, he's, yeah. he hasn't grown up yet. <laughs> he, hasn't. he tears up stuff. Like he if does. he can get to it, he will chew it. He will, yeah. He's a chewer. He chews, that's his thing. I mean, yeah. He chews. Yeah. And so we, we have a kennel for him. Um, but we're thinking about space and like where it would go. And fortunately for RV, RV, we have this indoor bike storage mm-hmm. in the second bunk. Mm-hmm. Now we didn't have any bikes. We have one for Maddie, but we didn't. So essentially the point is that the thing folds up and you slide the bikes in there, but we don't use it. So it stays down all the time and it leaves this little nook right mm-hmm. underneath, um, Payton's area. Mm-hmm. And so we just found a collapsible yep. kennel that goes right in there. It fits perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, and it's more than enough space for Hilo cause he's a little, you know, he's relatively a small dog. Yeah. Um, so he gets in there and he's comfortable, right. you know, he, and that's his space. He knows he goes right in. It's mm-hmm. like his dog house. Um, that's where he spends the night and Apollo just kind of lays around the floor everywhere, but we had to take that into account as we need we did. Mm-hmm. a space to put him. But again, even if we didn't have that space, the collapsible kennel mm-hmm. is very, very useful. Right. So at night, you know, when you can't monitor your dog and make sure he's not eating up everything, Crowns. you know, he just, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just, that's probably the thing he's gotten into most recently is Maddie the left her crayons on the floor and he's like oh cool snacks yes. and he chewed them all up and then we saw later that he chewed them up and ate them at the yeah. dog park it was probably grody so disgusting one of the worst things too he ate a marble one time oh god we almost lost him um he ate a giant marble don't know how he ate it but it was like this big around this thing was huge um and we almost lost him because he went into 
like he had seizures and, he was, and stuff he was, like that. Yeah, because he couldn't. He was filling up. Like yeah, it, 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 it got into his intestine and it blocked his system. Um, and it took a while for the vets to figure out what was wrong because we didn't know either. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we almost lost him because of that. So, the, oh, again, that's why we have to kennel him. Because he just eats. He he just, eats. It doesn't matter what it is. He'll chew yes. it and swallow it. And yeah. And I worry about him all the time <laughs> yes, <laughs> because yeah. of that. <laughs> so the collapsible kennel is very, very useful. Mm-hmm. Make sure you have like a little space inside your RV. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't have a space, again, you can unfold You can make it. space if you don't have space. Yeah. I've renovate. seen people um, turn their dining room tables into to kennels wow yeah um it looks really cool i mean i I, it looks like a u-shaped dinette right so you take the table out and you build like this custom kind of kennel thing um and so they go in there uh that's an option so like so the tables the the table is is on top right so they it's like a crate and then they put like a flat top on it and that works as your table but it also works as a kennel yeah um because these are the things you have to think about yeah like like making space and that what you have Mm -hmm. and the reason we're saying this we're putting all this stuff in a video, trying to share our experience and our knowledge with mm-hmm. you is we would much rather you see this video when you're researching and planning and you have a dog and like, yeah, what do I need to consider? Yeah. Do these things, do these things. <laughs> before. Think con- about, yeah, consider think about these things, things. before. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> uh, but then traveling in the vehicle on travel days. And a lot of this sounds like, probably sounds like no brainer stuff. Yeah. Um, but I've, again, yeah. it's the reason we're putting it in there is I've seen, I've, I joined, you know, these, these Facebook groups, um, like full-time RV living, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And people ask the questions, you know, like, what do you do with your, with your pets? You know, when you're traveling, I'm a family of like seven, like, and we have four dogs and two cats and a bearded dragon and fish. Like, how do you guys do it? I'm like, well, you, the, you don't, not the, with that much, but. Or, 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 or there is no answer for that. That is unprecedented. I you will be the first. Yeah. So <laughs> you have to consider, you know, if you're going to travel with your pets, you have to consider what you're going to do with them on, on travel days. Mm-hmm. Um, and you want to make sure that you have a, a big enough space for them to travel with you. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about that when we were upgrading in our upgrade the truck video, yes, why we, we chose mm-hmm. to go from the Silverado to getting the, the Ram. Mm-hmm. Um, we couldn't take our dogs anywhere with us because the it was the extended cab on the Silverado. Yeah. And we needed that extra space mm-hmm. in order an extra payload yeah. in order to carry Apollo's 105 pounds. Um, yeah. So that what truck you have, what truck you choose to tow with, mm-hmm. like how many people need to go into it, how much weight you have to carry. All and that stuff is you, important. Can you fit the dogs yeah. um, or cats or whatever you're yeah, traveling yeah, with yeah. in that vehicle with you? Because you don't don't leave them in the trailer. People ask that. I don't understand. Like what, how, how they come to the conclusion that that is okay. Never, ever put your animals in the trailer. These things do not have shocks on them at all. So everything bounces around. You can put a, you can put a video in there while you're traveling and see how much it bounces around. I mean, this thing was like jumping up and down. Like when you're traveling down the road, you don't want to put your animal on that. It will traumatize them. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can't believe that people ask that question, but do not put them in the trailer Mm -hmm. on travel days. Yeah. I would even. I grew up riding in the back of the truck, you know, and I turned out just fine, but I would not ever put my kids in the back of the truck yeah. driving down the highway, like mm-hmm. out on back country roads, going around, moving around fine, but out on the highway, like I, I've ridden in the back of the truck before, like on main, you know, main thoroughfares, yeah. you know, it's just like, I would never do that for my kids. If I wouldn't do it for my kids, then I wouldn't want to put Kilo or Apollo in yeah. that situation. And but, they do, they do make these um, kennels that go, can go in the back of the truck, mm-hmm. um, not the, just the collapsible like wire kennels like no they make these really industrial like size ones mm-hmm. that you can tie down into the back of the trailer and they're specifically designed to to be in the back of your truck mm-hmm. um and so that if if you don't have room in your truck um cab you know then it is something that you consider i would never do it we would never do it it's a mm-hmm. personal choice but people i have seen people do that mm-hmm. But if you're going to put to do that, make sure you get one that is specifically designed to be in the back of the truck. Because if you were to roll over or get in an accident or anything like that, these kennels are specifically designed to protect your pet mm-hmm. when um, there is an accident. Yes. So that is something that you can consider doing as well. Mm-hmm. So our solution, again, we got the truck scooting so we could put the boys inside the cab. Right. Um, Maddie's legs don't go down as far, you know, so ideally we put Kilo, uh, Apollo down mm-hmm. there behind the driver's side. Right. Or whatever side Maddie's on because she doesn't need a leg space. Mm-hmm. And then Hilo, he's tiny, so he can either go down where Peyton's legs are mm-hmm. behind 
the passenger or in front. There's enough space in the cab. I don't like putting him too much with me, though, because, mm -hmm. again, if we were to get into an accident, you yeah. know, um, I, he, would, he and, would get smushed. Yeah. Um, so I do try to put him in the back um, yeah. as much as possible. But, I mean, he can ride up front if he wants mm -hmm. to. Um, but So we just having the cab to accommodate the extra bodies, right? right. And then uh, personally, because Apollo's so big, you know, we, we want when he, when he gets into a spot, we want him to kind of stay there, mm -hmm. settle down. We'll get through the ride you know, and then and be okay. Otherwise, he does have really bad anxiety. Like, mm -hmm. he doesn't like riding in cars. He'll get up and try to move around. And for Hilo, get up and doing that, it's not a big deal. But when you have Apollo, 105 pounds, yeah. like three-foot dog, yeah. like he's moving around back there, that's not good. So yeah. we have seat belts that hook up to his harness and mm -hmm. we just snap him in. And usually when he's held in place for a little bit, he'll, he'll just settle down mm -hmm. and he'll be good for the ride. Yeah. So um, that's for things that you need to do on travel days. So we just wanted to kind of talk about you know, living in an RV and some things to consider when mm -hmm. you're traveling and living in an RV with uh, furry crewmates. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully you learned something from our experience. Hopefully. And if you've had any type of experience, again, that's different from ours, please put it in the comments. How do you deal with the issues? Maybe so we've, we've mentioned things to consider and we've said how we've solved those problems. Mm -hmm. Right. If you've come up with your own solution and it works for you, please share that with us. Yeah. You know, and then we can share that with our community or maybe it's even more efficient or a better way of doing things. Yep. We have no issue with you sharing your experience if it's different from us. So please put it in the comments. Yep. Uh, let us know what you think. Yep. And uh, now it's that time in the show where we talk about some Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. This week, we're going to be reviewing season one, episode six. Yep. The title is Litmus. It's directed by Rob Hardy and the writer is Jeff Fleming. And it originally aired in the United States on February 11th, 2005. So this particular episode, gets us back to one of the big major storylines of Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. They heated, they hinted at it rather in the miniseries. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of touched on it, kind of kept the story, kind of the tension building uh, over the one or two episodes and they got away from it. Mm -hmm. But it has come to a head in yes. this episode. So we know from the beginning mm -hmm. that the Cylons look like us. Yes. Yeah. Um, the one that Adama encountered mm -hmm. on Ragnar. You have a Boomer with Chief Terrell, and mm -hmm. you have a Sharon with Hilo on Caprica. Yeah. Um, we have a Durrell, who is the press secretary. Mm -hmm. We saw him left behind on Ragnar, yep. and but we've seen other copy uh, versions of him around, so they look like us. Yeah. Now, up until that point, Adama kept that stuff all to himself. Right. Right. And well, not just himself. I mean, there's only there's a few people that knew. Selected, but well, the president knew. The president knew. The powers that yes, be knew. Yes. And, that's and uh, so season uh, uh, season one, episode six opens with kind of you're going through the halls of Galactica and you see the back of Durrell's head. Mm -hmm. Now, we know we left him on Ragnar. Right. Right. But you see, if you've seen the show, if you're paying attention, you really recognize this guy. Mm -hmm. He's pretty defined, nice, clean hair yeah. profile. He's walking around again mm -hmm. on the Galactica. You're like, yeah. what's going on here? It's a Cylon. You know, yeah. the antenna goes up. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, there's cutting into different scenes where you see Boomer meeting up with Chief um, in this little bulkhead side room. Mm -hmm. And Callie knows about it. The deckhand knows about it. She's mm -hmm. like, I got you, Chief. I'm covering for you. Because yeah. they know their relationship is not supposed to be happening. She's an officer. Right. He's enlisted. They're not supposed to be doing this. Ty told them, don't stop. You got to mm -hmm. stop. That's a military order. They were supposed to stop. And it's punishable by their uniform code of mm -hmm. military justice, their yes. version of the UCMJ. Yep. Um, so while you're going through scenes between uh, Chief and Boomer getting together, doing illicit things, not too, nothing too racy, uh, you're seeing Daryl kind of walk through these different places in the ship until finally he gets to this one corner and Adama and Ty kind of see him and they recognize him like, what is going on here? And so mm -hmm. they start following him and then finally they trap him and then they corner him and they confront him and he turns around and he's got a bomb vest on, a yeah. suicide bomber vest on and he sets it off. It, Boom. Right. And so then it goes to the show's opener. Mm -hmm. So um, it turns out that he killed three people, um, injured 13. Um, and so it shows them in the the, the med bay or whatever. Um, and so uh, they finally or I think um, Adama and the president were talking about what to do. Um, so they decide to reveal the truth mm -hmm. about um, the fact that the Cylons look like them. Um and then he sets up a, uh, what is it called? Independent tribunal mm -hmm. to investigate what happened. You know, mm -hmm. he wants to know how the Cylon got on his ship mm -hmm. um, undetected and got through security and stuff like that. So 
he's all for that. She, the president is not. She says, um, being in politics for 20 years, this is going to open up a witch hunt, like don't do it. Um, but he decides to, to, to do it anyways. Um, Mm -hmm. and orders, I guess he orders her to, to, to talk about it, like do the press conference or whatever, because she didn't want to. Um, but Mm -hmm. then like the next cut goes to, to her and that, that press conference when she is saying, what's going on with the the Cylons. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think necessarily that he made her. It's just that he's going to conduct business on the Galactica, Mm -hmm. how he's going to do it. Yeah. Whatever happens to the civilian side of the fleet, he's like, you do you. Yeah. I'm going to do this investigation. Mm -hmm. I want to find out who messed up, who dropped the ball. Yeah. People died on my ship. I got to do something But then she goes and she does a press conference. So I'm not sure what happened in between there. Well, it's it's almost like he he didn't make her. Like Mm -hmm. he didn't say, go do it. He Mm -hmm. said, I'm going to do this. And by him doing that and having this independent tribunal, She's like, well, if he's going to do it, it's kind of strong arming me, bullying me into I have to announce this yeah, because the word's going to get out, mm-hmm. you know. And so she does this press conference oh, okay. and yeah. she kind of opens it up. Um, so they have another scene where the the deckhands, Callie, um, the specialist and, and someone else uh, are making some moonshine. And Chief comes in and sees them doing it. And of course, they're not supposed to be doing that. But he's like, uh, he doesn't get on them. He says, like, come back and I'll show you how to do kind of bonding with them. Mm-hmm. And you realize that they're kind of they're a lot of the protocol of what is the right thing to do, what is the regulation, has kind of fallen by the wayside. Mm-hmm. And they're all kind of covering for each other because they're all kind of family that brought together by yeah. this crisis. Right. And so you're not gonna rat your brother out. You right. know, you're just like so things that they would normally say, this is not okay, we can't be doing this. Case in point, the relationship between Boomer and Chief, mm-hmm. case in point, these deckhands making moonshine in his you know, in his ship, right. they should be checking each other in these things, but they're not. Right. But I think it's because of the conditions, mm-hmm. right, that they're under. Right. So it's this cool kind of like laissez-faire, like we're all family. We're not, no one's going to write each other out that let kind of this happen. Yeah. Um, so Sergeant Hadrian is the master of arms and she sets her off on, on she goes about about her, ex, her investigation, mm-hmm. starting this independent tribunal uh, with no yeah. oversight. Yeah, and she asks Adama, she's like, if I'm going to do this, I, I, I need um, full access. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter what evidence, whatever, wherever the evidence leads me, I need permission to go there. And mm-hmm. he says, yes, like, you'll have it. And so she starts asking questions and it shows scenes of her interrogating the deck, interrogating, asking the deckhands questions about where Chief was at the night of the bombing. Mm-hmm. Now, they all know they're supposed to cover for Chief. But they never, ever stopped to get their story straight. Right. So, they all so have she asked stories. three different people. They all get three different stories where Chief yeah. is supposed to be. And so there's the antenna on the Master, master right. Arms. She's like, I'm going to go talk to Chief. Mm-hmm. And so she brings in uh, Chief and Boomer right. for questioning. Mm-hmm. And so they, he asks them, he's like, you know, um, are you in an illicit relationship with Lieutenant Valeric? Mm-hmm. And he's literally on the stand at this point. And he's like, no, you know. Um, and so then she comes and confronts him with the conflicting word that the deckhand said where he was at. Yeah. You know, you said you were here, but your deckhand says you were here. And so as soon as he realizes, like, crap, they're covering for me, they're covering for me. Mm-hmm. He pleads the Article 23, which they're pleading the fifth and which essentially it doesn't make him guilty, mm-hmm. but it makes him look guilty. Yeah. Um, and so he's like. He understands that. He doesn't that. say anything else after that. He doesn't. He mm-hmm. doesn't say anything. Even though it makes him look guilty, he's like, I'm not going to say anymore. And if I take the heat mm-hmm. for this, that's fine. Right. You know, but I'm not going to say anything anymore. Only problem is he can't tell everyone else, shut up, right. stop talking. Right. And so she continues her investigation, putting one word against the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they bring in, unfortunately, a specialist, which is like E1 or E2, low on the totem pole. Not really smart. Doesn't see the big picture. Yeah. And they put him under the, the microscope and he cracks under the pressure and he realizes that he said too much. And then when he realizes he said too much, he's like, well, I'm going to take the heat then. And so then he admits to everything, leaving the hatchway open, letting, you know, like the security things like he lied about chief. He left this post like he was supposed to be on watch and he admits to leaving his post. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and that's a big no, no, yeah. huge no, no. Yeah. Um, it's one of the general orders in the actual military. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, so essentially he takes the fall for all of this, for the bombing, everything. They identify that, yes, it was a Cylon that did it, right. but the Cylon was able to do it because this guy left his post. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then he gets um, implemented, right? For the, the specialist or whatever. He yeah, he's gets, put in the brig. He's put, he gets put in the brig. Mm-hmm. Um, he's guilty. They, they, they're going to arrest him, charge him with um, 
I guess leaving... Derelic- dereliction of duty. Yeah. You know, abandoning his post, abandoning going AWOL. Post. Which, which, which is not colluding with the Cylons, no. but it is a big it's deal. Ne- you neglected what you were supposed to be yeah, doing, and that's yeah. how the Cylons infiltrated. Yeah. Um, so he's he's t- he's getting the blame for, for what happened. Yeah, and this is something I don't think a lot of people know, is that the, the military has its own code of law. Mm-hmm. And so if you... You can get punished by the UCMJ, but not only that, you you're, you're double held accountable because if you commit crimes, you in while in the military, mm-hmm. you can violate the you can be punished for violating the UCMJ, but you also can be punished in civil courts, yeah. right? So like they are held to a really really high standard. So right. this guy, Daryl, you know, leaving his post like he had said he did, even though he really didn't because he was just covering for chief, like he's getting slammed for that, and then it led to through neglect or whatever reason, mm-hmm. you know. So civilians dying, like yeah. he's he's going to be in the brig for a long, long right. time. It's right. a big deal. Um, and so once they finally come, like that's what happened. He admitted he's the fall guy. That is the the, the pound of flesh for the civilian people out there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Adamus thinks it's over, but they come and they say, Sergeant Henry wants to question you. Yeah. And he's like, what? So he, she brings in Admiral Adama to question him and implies that he is partially responsible mm-hmm. because he knew about Chief and Lieutenant Valeri's relationship yes. and he didn't do anything, essentially saying that because they had all gone lax on protocol and everything, this contributed to the gaps in security that let the Cylon through to kill these people, saying like, essentially, you're in charge. It happened on your watch. You were responsible. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that feel certain ways about how he responds to that. Mm-hmm. Essentially, he shuts down the independent tribunal. Yeah. And you're like, well, she's not wrong. Right. <laughs> and this speech that you give because you're Admiral Adama that ends it, it's kind of this drop mic moment. No, she's not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong, but she's not wrong. You know, like mm-hmm. his speech he gives does make sense. It is true. She did. However, she wasn't wrong. Yeah. And so essentially there's Marines in the room and she tells the Marines to arrest Adama. And then Adama tells the Marines Make your choice. Yeah, you arrest her. <laughs> yes. She's out of line. And he tells the Marine, you make your choice. They're both right. And these Marines are like, well, he's the Admiral. So, and they arrest Sergeant they H. Steps, he kind of steps to the side. And he's like, like uh, yeah, Sergeant, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sergeant, what's her name? Hadrian. Hadrian. Come, uh, across, come with us. <laughs> right. She's like, nice try, but he's the Admiral. I don't know what you want me to do. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like it was this really conflicting moment. A lot of people are like, ooh, Adama. And then there's, you know, if you really think about it, like, that, this is one of those moments where you see him really kind of flexing his power. Mm-hmm. But he could only do this because of the situation that they're in. Right. If he was trying to do this and all things are normal, he'd be brought up on charges. He'd go see his superior. Mm-hmm. But right now, he is the He's at the top. top of the totem pole. Yeah. So unfortunately, mm-hmm. what he says goes. Yeah. And this has huge implications down the road in later episodes where certain people start to question that. Right. And it's a big deal. Yeah. So something to remember. Mm-hmm. End of the episode, Chief ends things with Boomer. Yes. He's like. He said that um, he goes to her and he's like, this is over. Um, we're not doing this anymore. And she's like, I deserve a, a better explanation than that. He's like, uh, he's upset because his deck hand is is taking the fall for him and he's like that's not worth it this this kid is is going down for something that we're responsible for and uh he, i'm not having that so mm-hmm. he he ends it with her he says it's not worth it um to do that so that he ends that relationship with her yes and it was really interesting to note and i they mentioned this on the Battlestar star galacticast um if you look at her re- reaction when she he says it's over and he's like our relationship is not worth this kid spending his life on the break right at that she's like all right, mm-hmm. that's it. But then when she walks past him at the end of the episode oh, yeah, and yeah. he's like, by the way, did you leave that hatch open? We were getting together that one night. And she's like, what? Like when he asks her and confronts her about possibly being in league with the Cylons and colluding with them, she gets viscerally, visually annoyed. Mm-hmm. Like that is what draws in a, you know, a reaction out of her. And so you're wondering like, was the relationship with Chief a front Mm -hmm. and how much of a sleeper agent is boomer how much of what's really like is she doing versus her program doing like you know so it was a really really cool kind of scene where you're like okay does she know what she's doing like back Mm -hmm. in water you know like when she's acting all but then at the end you see her kind of do this little smile when she's walking down the hall like what does she know what doesn't she know is she sleeper agent is she not Mm -hmm. um we talked a lot about boomer but there was also a lot of things that happened with Sharon. Mm-hmm. Now, Sharon is the copy of Boomer. 
with on Hilo Caprica. on Caprica. And we've been there for 17 days. Um, last episode, we talked about how they got separated when the Centurions attacked their little mm-hmm. secure facility or secure safe house. Um, he wakes up and she's not there. So now he's looking for her and the Cylons are watching him. And then you see this is kind of some big experiment. Mm-hmm. They're observing him for some reason. They're gathering information on how he behaves with her and their, mm-hmm. their, their relationship and stuff. And uh, so they was like, well, if he goes south, you know, he's, he's going to leave you. Right. He doesn't love you. Mm-hmm. You know, if he goes north, then he loves you. If he goes south, we're going to kill him. If he goes north, well, that changes things. Yeah. He goes north, you know, out of duty, out of love, whatever reason, he goes to save Sharon. Mm-hmm. He finds her. He saves her. And then so they're back together on the run. Um, and, there's, and you find this out later, you know, that um, the Cylons are actually experimenting with love. You yes. Know, they, they don't understand it quite fully because they're robots because um, they're robots yeah. mm-hmm. so they're experimenting with love so that's that's why that's why they took sharon in the first place because mm-hmm. um, they wanted he, to see what he would do how he would respond would he go after her mm-hmm. or would he flee yeah to, to save himself so it's kind of creepy because you've seen kind of the six following them and them watching these two like mm-hmm. why are they watching them and then you realize like it's all about love they're trying to see how she's been doing things to him and how he's responding to it and you know cylons and humans whether or not she can be loved Mm -hmm. by a human which is a really really interesting story so that again the the a lot of slow burns that were happening was chief and boomer Mm -hmm. that came to a head it's over it blew up in Mm -hmm. their faces the slow burn that's still going on now is with uh sharon and Mm -hmm. hilo on caprica and what's going on with that yep there was a guy a setting that brought in head six um he goes to visit starbuck after the bombing and everything in in the in medbay she's Mm -hmm. still there from hurting her leg and she mentions to him that they found Durrell, the bomber, on C deck, mm-hmm. which is where his lab and his Cylon detector yes. is. <laughs> and he hadn't put two and two together, but she's like, "Do you think that maybe he was he coming was for going you after you?" And he's yeah. like, "Wait, what?" And then it clicks. He's like, "Holy crap! They very well could have been coming for me." Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know what? I'm not going to sit here and die for this machine. I'm just going to blow it up myself. And Head Six like says, you know, don't make me angry, guys. You know, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry, which was a direct call back to the original uh, Hulk yep. scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's really weird. You're like, what is going on with Head Six and guys? So that again, that slow burn is still going. Mm-hmm. They, she wants him to make the Cylon detector, but it's obvious the Cylons want to get rid of the Cylon detector. Mm-hmm. So like, what is Head Six? You know, is she working against the Cylons? Is she working with them? Is she minute? So that, again, it's a slow burn keeps yeah. it all going. Yep. Overall, I think this is a good episode. This is the storyline. It was good. I don't want to spoil anything, <laughs> but this is really kind of one of the big major storylines that they keep going all throughout the series of Cylons look like us. Mm-hmm. And I've always believed this show is about the human condition and how we respond to certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not about the end of the world. It's not about the Cylons. It's about how we treat each other mm-hmm. in these moments. And, and the president said that there will be a witch hunt. You'll start saying your neighbor's a Cylon simply because they brush their teeth funny. Mm-hmm. And I think that is a essential part of the human condition. Mm-hmm. And this storyline always, that drumbeat is always going like, how do we treat each other when you're always suspecting one another? And of course, this show came out recently after 9-11 with a whole see something, say something, you know, campaign and Mm -hmm. everybody looking at each other and being untrusting, you know, things like that. So it's really, really cool. It's so relevant. I mean, it's still kind of relevant. You know, people are looking at each other, kind of distance themselves, you know, suspicious. Um, So that's something that Battlestar does really, really well. And Mm -hmm. this is kind of the first time that it came to a head and was a big major episode. Yeah. I like the fact they finally delivered on it because they again, they've been hinting at it, making Mm -hmm. a big deal. Um, but then finally did this big splash where it comes to the head and uh, Chief and Boomer's relationship is over mm-hmm. because of it. Everyone knows about it now. Um, a lot of drama happened on the Galactica simply because of the slow burn and not being honest up front, kind of playing this relationship. The secrets, you know, mm-hmm. the secrets all came to finally to a head. Yeah. So it was a good episode. I really enjoyed it. I don't think there was a lot of meat to it, though. I felt like the the nod to Hilo again and that whole deal was really short not enough um also the gaia scene and head six that just again made more questions didn't really give any more information it wasn't a bad scene though i always love whenever he uh has interactions with head six in public spaces yeah <laughs> there's this one where the she slams him up against the wall and she's like choking him you wouldn't like me when i'm angry and so this is happening in his head 
but to a Marine guard who's just standing there watching him, like guys up against the wall, like, ah, you know, it, <laughs> I always love those scenes. So it wasn't too bad. Um, but I like that it, it brought that storyline back to a head after the logistical episodes of water and you can't go home again, mm -hmm. down pilots, personnel issues. Um, so yeah, wasn't a bad episode. I totally enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, same. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it. I think it, it, it was one of those episodes where it sets the tone for, for future episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the things that happen in this one are going to come up later on, um, down the road. Um, and so those are always good episodes. Um, it's pretty intense, um, as well, um, as, as most of them are, but, um, I feel like this one is pretty intense because, um, like you said earlier, where Adama kind of makes his stand, um, and shows his hand, you know, he, he gives her full access, yes, but then he yanks, the he yanks it back. Yes. Um, so I, I, I think that that was kind of messed up. But again, it just shows where he's at, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and he does that a lot throughout the entire series. He does that where he kind of pulls his chain back. Pulls rank. Yep. Yeah, pulls rank. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't like Callie. <laughs> I don't think that she's a very good actress either. Yeah. She has some really intense moments in the episode. And, and, and then later on down the road, she, she again gets pretty intense too. I, I don't, I don't like, I don't like her interaction yes. with, um, with people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but overall, yes, I think it was a great episode. Um, I think it gave a lot of information. Um, I think, um, the whole situation with Hilo and Sharon, um, I think future episodes, there's, it's going to be a lot more, it's going to be based on them. They're going to show a lot more. So I'm excited for that. Cause I like that, that interaction with them. Um, so those are those are one of my favorites when it, when we get to that. So I like the fact that they're opening up to that, and then it's going to go to to them, yeah. and there'll be a couple episodes where it's it's a fo focus more on them. Yeah, totally. Like so, you had the two relationships of the different Sharons, mm -hmm. right? You had the Chief and Boomer, you had Sharon and Hilo, mm -hmm. and you can root for one or the other, you know, because you know Hilo always liked Boomer, right? But he respected the relationship that those two had. Mm -hmm. But due to silent technology, he got his own copy, you know. Like, <laughs> So you're like, really like, are you team Tyrrell? Are you team Agathon? Yes. Team Hilo? And you're like, I like Hilo better as a character. I really do. I like the relationship that's... Obviously, because my dog is named, named after him. Yeah. <laughs> so it is really cool to see that yeah. that kind of relationship fell by the wayside. And you see this one kind of growing and budding, become something real. Um, yeah, because, I mean, if you think about it, the Chief and Boomer one was made in times of peace. Right. You know, mm -hmm. when things are great and fun. Yeah. Like this relationship is being forged between Hilo and Sharon mm -hmm. is under duress. Granted, his feelings are genuine. Hers are manipulated. We don't know if they're genuine or not. Right. But his feelings are definitely genuine. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a really enjoyable episode, but it felt, it felt short because the story was pretty straightforward. You had a couple of, there wasn't much diverging to yeah. different storylines. It felt short, mm -hmm. but nice and compact, but it brought back Very this direct. really big major storyline yes. that will go on all throughout the series. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you enjoyed our review of season one, episode six, Litmus and Battlestar Galactica. Hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you down the road. See you down the road. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our video channel and podcast. We have absolutely loved building connections with the RV community and anyone else that is interested in this lifestyle. So if you'd like to connect with us, please follow us on Instagram and YouTube at So Say We Travel or visit us at SoSayWeTravel.com. See you down the road.